fans have loved every moment. The tension has been building and it's now crunch time here in the city of Nanning because it's semi-finals day here at the 16th staging of the Total BWF Sudaman Cup, the World Mixed Team Championships. It's Indonesia, the first ever winners against Japan, the pre-tournament favourites. Which of these two teams will meet 10-time former champion China in tomorrow's final? And for the last six days, all the action has been taking place here at the Guangxi Sports Center Gymnasium. Because a week ago, 31 countries from across the globe gathered here in Nanning for this prestigious biannual event. From 31 nations at the start of the week, and after 51 fiercely contested ties, here on semi-final Saturday, we were down to the last four. And this is the prize awaiting the winning team tomorrow, the magnificent Sudaman Cup trophy. 80 centimetres high, it's made of solid silver plated with 22 karat gold. The body of the cup in the form of a shuttle, which is surmounted by a replica of the Borobudur temple. It really is one of the most iconic trophies in the world of sport. Now over the first four days we had round robin group play before the quarterfinal knockout stage. And the big news from the quarterfinals was the defeat by Thailand of the defending champions and four-time winners, Korea. And that means for the first time ever in the history of the Sudaman Cup, the defending champions have failed to reach at least the semi-final stage. This morning, we had the first of the two semi-finals and China have booked their place in the final for a 13th consecutive time by virtue of their three-love win over Thailand. This evening, it's Indonesia against Japan. And a short while ago, both teams arrived here at the venue. The Indonesia squad contains stars who between them have won Olympic, World and Asian Games gold medals. The Japanese team contains three players with Olympic medals, plus they have the reigning world champions in both the men's singles and the women's doubles. So this is a semi-final so many of the fans wanted to see. It's Indonesia against Japan. Indonesia, the first ever winners of the Sudaman Cup 30 years ago, have also contested the final on another six occasions but it's been 12 long years since their last appearance in the final in Glasgow in 2007. Japan, who started the competition as the number one seeds, are contesting their third consecutive semi-final. But four years ago, they also went on to reach the final in Dongguang, the last time this event was staged here in China. So the traditional team huddle. And I can tell you that each tie in the Sudaman Cup competition is the best of five matches, one of each of the five disciplines. But unlike the group stage, once the tie is won, any remaining matches are not contested. So the order of play can be crucial, and this is the order that the referee has chosen for this evening. We will be starting with men's doubles, and it's the world number ones against the world number twos. Gideon and Sukamolio, the Asian Games gold medalists, up against the world championship silver medalists, Komora and Sonoda. Then women's singles and two former world junior champions, Gregoria Mariska Tunjun, up against Akane Yamaguchi, bronze medalist at last year's World Championships. Then men's singles and Anthony Sinisuka Ginting, Asian Games bronze medalist, up against the reigning world champion, Kento Momota. Then women's doubles and the world championship bronze medalists, Poli and Orahayu, up against the reigning world champions, Matsumoto and Nagahara. And should we come down to the fifth match of the tie, it will be mixed doubles, Jordan and Octavianti against last year's All England champions, Watanabe and Higashino. Well, with men's doubles being our first match of this semi-final tie, a chance for us to look a little more closely at the two pairs contesting this. It is the world number ones against the world number twos, and that always should make for an exciting match. This, incredibly, will be the 14th meeting uh, between these two pairs. 
so they know each other's games extremely well. The last time they met, it was the Indonesians that won. It was the semi-final of the recent Badminton Asia Championships in Wuhan here, China. It was three games on that occasion, 51 minutes. And the toss of the coin, and I believe the Japanese pair have chosen ends. Well, that confirms what I was telling you, the world number ones against the world number twos. And the world number ones, Gideon and Sukumolio, enjoying their 99th week in total as world number ones. But this man, Takeshi Komura, 29 years of age, as indeed is his partner. They are joy enjoying their eighth week in total as world number twos. Two world championship medals for the Japanese pair, a bronze and then last year a silver. As far as they are concerned, well, they weren't selected on Monday's tie against Russia. Then they played first against Thailand and got Japan off to a winning start, two straight games there. Then in the quarter-final against Malaysia. Again, they played first and had a thrilling match against the Malaysians, Ong and Tio. As far as the Indonesians are concerned, this is Kevin Sanjaya Sukumolio. He is 23 years of age. His partner, Marcus Fernaldi Gideon, 28. Two-time All England champions, but here in Nanning, uh, they have played twice, as you can see. They weren't selected against Denmark, but they played the first match against England, got, England, got that tie off to a flying start in the quarter-final yesterday against Chinese Taipei. They once again played the first match and beat uh, Li Yang and Wang Chi Lin in two straight games. Well, as we look at our court officials for this, I can wel welcome former Danish head coach, Steen Pedersen, sitting alongside me for this one. And you and I chatting on the bus coming down to the stadium. We thought this men's doubles could be crucial. Yeah, it's, um, in my opinion, it's a must-win match for Indonesia, who, uh, the way I see it, are a little bit below Japan in the women's singles and the women's doubles. So you think we could go to a fifth? We're certainly hoping so, all the neutrals. Yeah. So the Indonesian coaching bench. They have a little advantage because the man to the right, he used to sit on the other side, coaching Kamura and Sonora. Exactly. Rioni Manikin has only just gone back to coaching his home country, Indonesia. The coaches on the Japanese coaching bench, Park Jubong and Tan Kim He. Indonesia. Represented by Marcus Ferrandi Gideon and Kavi Sanjaya Sukamuju. And on my left, Japan. Represented by Takashi Kamura and Keiko Sonada. Marcus Indonesia served. Marcus Ferrandi Gideon served to Takashi Kamura. Level play. So our uh, umpire. How Long Hu of China calls for this semi final tie to get underway. <laughs> well, broken string on the very first rally from Sukumolio. Now, Steen, I have to ask the question, I was a little bit surprised about this Japanese selection because the second men's doubles pair of Endo and Watanabe actually beat this Indonesian pair in the final of the Badminton Asia Championships. Didn't just beat them. Thoroughly. Uh, they thoroughly beat them. 18 uh, and 3. Yeah. Uh, I can only um, assume that it's One, to do with the overall team selection that Yuta Watanabe is uh, also playing the mixed doubles. That's the fifth match here. 
and they didn't play that well against um, um, the tall uh, Russian Vladimir Ivanov and his partner Ivan Sosomov in the group two, stage. Yes, That's the first of the group matches, and you're right, they lost in two straight games. So, a couple of uh, very important factors that you've identified as to why they possibly weren't selected. Oh, oh what a shot. shot. There is Goma. Two all. We watched a thriller yesterday with Komora and Sonoda against Onyu Sin and Tiu Yi. Hey. Actually, I don't think you were watching it, were you? I was watching a little bit of it because I was uh, on the other adjacent court and we waited for uh, the second game to finish before a new match was called. It looked like an exciting match. It was an absolute thriller. It was fast paced. Oh. But. The point I was going to make was that this Japanese pair really struggled to get any angle on their downward shot and really struggled to penetrate with their attacking play. Yeah, that's true, but um, uh, now it's Gideon and, and Sukumori on the other side and, and they're not um, too keen on defending, so I suppose that Japanese pair will have a little bit of an easier time penetrating today uh, if that's what they're planning on doing. We've seen some very tactical matches between these two pairs with uh, lots of um, defense and actually also some uh, clears mixed in. It's not often we see it, but we've seen it in men's doubles with these two pairs. Stadium here is um, a little bit slow, which it is, but then they don't feel totally at home yet. Um, Kamura and Sonoda. Was it their third match, this match here, in the tournament, third or fourth match? It was there yesterday, was their second match. Yeah, so this Seven. is their third, third match. Three. That would, in a normal tournament, account for a quarterfinal stage. Mm. Uh, and they would be unlucky to play uh, Gideon and Tsukamuyo in the quarterfinals. So yeah. the more matches you play in a venue, you, the better your timing gets. Oh, Excellent. Yes. I had the um, pleasure of watching Tsukamuyo and Gideon yesterday playing uh, the upcoming new combination from Chinese Taipei, Wang and uh, Li. And I must say they played uh, magnificently in two Indonesians, especially I was impressed by Sukumulio, who is only known as the front court player. He took a lot of responsibility yesterday. Playing extremely well from the back court. Well taken. That's fascinating, Steve, because when the other Japanese pair, Endo and Watanabe, beat this Indonesian pair in the final of the Asia Championships, the Japanese pair absolutely isolated Marcus Fernaldi Gideon. Yeah. Whether they were attacking or whether they just lifted to him at the back, and he actually broke down. I thought he was the weak link. So the fact that Sukumolio has now said, okay, well, I'm going to come and share the workload, yeah. that's interesting to me. And I, I don't know whether um, the Chinese Taipei pair yesterday had the same game plan going into the match, but I think Marcus Gideon also mixed up his attack much better instead of just um, mindlessly firing smashes away he mixed it up with so this fall here he mixed it up with uh, with very good disguise drop shots so they played with great variation the, the two Indonesians yeah you could see him lifting his left arm there before he struck the shuttle. 
indication that it was high. of the match so far, I would yeah. guess. Yeah, look who they're playing to so much of the time. <laughs> and now they Oh, that's wild. <laughs> what on earth was Takeshi Kamara thinking of there? Obviously ran out of patience. Uh, the Indonesians, the world number ones, with the advantage at the mid-game interval, a six-point advantage. Second. Second. Oh, I hadn't realised he dropped his racket. Eleven five. So, Steen, I don't know uh, if you were able to hear anything Tank him her, because he coaches Play. in English to the Japanese players, doesn't he? I, I couldn't hear any word because the two teams were supporting so fiercely <laughs> from outside <laughs> that it was, uh, when I tried to turn up the microphone here, I just got all noise and noise. But, yes, I've noticed that uh, Tank him her is, is coaching in English, and uh, I can't help thinking that... Um, a lot is uh, lost in uh, translation. The nuances um, can be difficult to grasp when everything is uh, sort of uh, exploding around you and you have to think through a third language. So yeah. his thoughts in uh, Bahasa through his English in through uh, yeah. the English of uh, Kamura and Sonora and then to a Japanese uh, mind. Yeah. Difficult. Oh, that is extraordinary. What a shot. Well, he's obviously picked up today where he left, left off yeah, yesterday, Sukumolio. Yes. But it's also, uh, I don't think Kimura and Sonora, they've sort of... Uh, continued the strategy uh, from Asia Championships in targeting uh, Marcus Gideon because I mean, then you need to do it from the beginning. Yeah. But I guess also the Indonesians could have a strategy of um, letting this man work a bit here. Kiko Sonoda. said it from, from yesterday, but one of the things here is that when they lift to Sonoda, uh, Sukumulio and Gideon, they don't give him a lot of height to work with, so he's always a little bit under stress, and when he is that, he can't get the angle on his shot. He needs to leap in the air to get the angle on it, so the Indonesians will have a much easier time defending 
if they can keep on lifting a little bit before they're forced to lift and lift high. Needs to leap in the air to get the ankle on it. So the Indonesians will have a much easier time defending if they can keep on lifting a little bit before they're forced to lift and lift high. One of the most exciting dynamic players to watch in world badminton, but also extremely efficient at the front of the court. That, that's the um, exceptional part of it, because we often see that when front court players are being pushed to the back and made to work hard from the back court, they lose a bit of their sting from the front court. That wasn't the case yesterday, in my opinion. Got the net cord on the return of serve. Kamora do the same thing with that? Yeah. yeah. Well, it happens too often for it to be luck. Good skill. Oh, was that a tumble throw from uh, Kamora? I think it was. I think it might have been. Oh, clever, clever, clever. They are getting outplayed, Kimura and Sonoda. They have not had anything at all in this first game. They've constantly been retrieving. Whenever they've been uh, attacking, it's been flat, it's been undangerous. It's the Indonesians who, is, who are totally in control. What? Up until now. Over, <laughs> uh, Japanese coaching bench looking a little bit concerned. Had a little think about it, yeah. didn't it? Yeah, well played, Sukumolio. Must be satisfied. European Guardian, really minor key. Nine judge. Nine judge. Well, I don't think Japanese fans should despair quite yet because no. yesterday in the quarterfinal, this Japanese pair lost the opening game to the Malaysians to 13. Oh, yeah. that was also a big okay, um, deficit. deficit there. But I just don't think uh, Kevin and Marcus, I don't think they've played 80% of their level yet. It's been a walk in the park for them. Well left. That is over 19 fell. Two points away from the opening game for Indonesia. Oh! Oh! That is over 13-12. 
Champion, nine feet. Yeah, he's trying to jump so. He is, isn't he? Chopping underneath the yeah. shuttle as he's serving. But they're not so easy to uh, get to tumble, these uh, Yonex shuttles. And so Kim Astro, uh, when Denmark was playing, and he's 14, got 19. a good tumble so well, uh, in my opinion, it wasn't possible to, to do as efficient with these shuttles as with other brands. threats of Gideon at the front of the court, I think forcing Kamora into error. And with that error comes six game point opportunities for Gideon and Sukumolia. To Indonesia 21 14 and as steam was saying quite frankly he used the expression a stroll in the park has certainly looked to be outclassing the world number twos in that opening game 17 minutes and one game to the good 21 14 Well, the, both sets of coaches have had their say. But, Steen, I'm interested to know. Obviously, we couldn't hear. Certainly, you and I no. were struggling to hear what was being said. So, what would you have said to Love this all. Japanese pair? to get them to turn this match around? Yeah, I almost don't know, because I felt they were so far behind. I, mean, I think 21-14 is lying. They were not at all that close. Um, I would I would go back to targeting Gideon. That's not necessarily working, because he also played better yesterday. But I think he played better because uh, Kevin is in a much better playing mood and he works uh, really hard from the backcourt. So I would go back to targeting uh, Marcus because I think overall he is the weaker of the two players um, and hope that it would work. Um, then it's important also in the uh, attacking situation the Japanese players have an attack. Great rally here, by the way. Yeah. Um, then it's important that they can get angle on their shots. So. They've got to block, and um, yeah, the best idea, in my opinion, is to block in front of Marcus. Whereas Kevin, you really don't know what he's going to do no. uh, on the front court there. And I don't know what they talked about uh, uh, b before the match, but depending on whether they've gone for a little more um, patient style, start with the defense. If they've gone for saying, "Hey, we want to penetrate our attack," and so on, then. They've got to try and attack more. They've got to do better service returns. This one, there was way too much 
pace and it went to uh, Kevin high above the tape. And you've got to get punched in the nose when you play shots like that. So it's not working for the Royals in order. Yeah, they've got to get it going down. Uh, this well, get, it, uh, get it in a downward direction. Yeah. Service error. Service so over. One, two. A lot more drop right. shots in the beginning instead of just firing Three, smashes Three, uh, from uh, Gideon. So they've got to uh, move their defense forward so that they can punish those drop shots. And by punish, I don't mean necessarily killing them, but they can play even better lifts. Well left. Only just better lift. Surely a few blocks to the net as well. Yeah. If uh, if Gideon is not right out of the net. Yeah. But also here in this rally, that uh, Japanese one, we saw Sonora being moved from side to side, and it's hard to move both side to side and then jump really high to get angle on the shots. So uh, see, he's being moved. Yep. He's being moved again, and that means. Th his attack loses his thing. Oh! That is over. Four, two. Yeah, I was deceived by that punch oh! clear. Come on, up. Pace in that rally and block at first and see if you can get a good lift and uh, you can see Kamura said to Sonora hey take it easy take it easy but he I suppose he's not feeling too well at the moment uh, Keiko Sonora it was the first Start with two drop shots. Good rally. Oh, yes. Over, three, five. Yeah, you see, you should have hit it that straight. What were you doing trying to hit it cross court? Do not change shuttle, play. <laughs> Growing up, I watched a lot of Muppet Show, and there were two old guys <laughs> criticizing everything. I feel it's like uh, Harry and uh, Rayoni sitting there. Hey, you should have done that. I thought for oh. a moment you were going to say us two. Ah, uh, no, no. no. <laughs> Though I think Harry and Rayoni are far more positive, so. Sometimes it is us. Four or five. That's what's an Abbott in white there. I guess if he were on the court, he can, he, I mean, he can basically jump anywhere. Yeah. Forwards, backwards, up. Yeah. So he might have been able to get some steepness on uh, those lifts, even though they were going from side to side. It did even occur to me earlier today that we might have a scenario before we saw the team sheets. Do you remember the Thomas Cup last year in Bangkok when they split the two pairs? Yeah. And this man, Sonoda, uh, played with Yuto Watanabe. Yeah. But obviously they've gone with their established pair, the World Championship silver medalists. They played the very up and down Thomas Cup campaign. And Kamura and Sonoda, but I mean... Oh, look at that. Oh, it's just wide. Just wide. Yesterday, the heat from you seen in uh, TV, and they were 2 nothing down head to head against yeah. them. So they've got to feel that um, they're in reasonably good shape. Yeah. Oh, oh. What a serve. Goodness me. Seven, five. 
perfection. Sonore is that um, where it's normally possible to play uh, Gideon from side to side, then um, Sukumulio is coming out far more than we used to see him uh, move to the back court, and um, that helps Gideon immensely. So they've got to uh, play some uh, straight blocks, keeping him tight to the net. Thing. He is, isn't he? was an open court. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that great that after a player has missed yeah. what should be an easy winner, that the two coaches just smile? They know who's paying for the uh, soft drinks tonight. <laughs> there was no one there. No. There was no one. Oh! seem to climb a ladder to get up to that yeah. one. Fantastic. Two-point advantage for Indonesia here in the second game at the mid-game interval, having already won the first. Okay, yeah. Okay. Well, I understood good and yeah. go for it or keep going or go on or yeah, that was a shocking miss, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Good to know they're human after all. I don't think Kevin is human. <laughs> I think it's some kind of uh, Kevin, nine. super Five. super superhuman. So eleven nine. 
Hey. Oh, there's a challenge here. Oh, the umpire changed his mind, or the linesman changed his okay. mind, so now Kevin is challenging. Oh, right. OK, I looked immediately at the line Gideon judge and he signalled in, so the Japanese looked to uh, challenge. Yeah. Uh, but because you're right, the line judge changed his mind, so now it's the Indonesians who have to make the challenge. Thank goodness for Hawkeye. Oh, it was clearly out. So the line judge got it right get in the end. Successful. Yeah. One, two, and get Two horses there. 10, 11, play. Could say if he ended up doing it wrong when he was influenced by the Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> 11, oh. That's level. So let's see what... Uh, Japan has come up with new ideas for his players and take him home. Now, Marcus Fernaldi Gideon just proving that he too can be effective from the front of the court. Look at the placement on that towards the left hip. Yeah. I have a theory that uh, I'm going to look a little bit out for here that the Indonesians are hitting their smashes a bit more angled and not with the um, maximum power. Oh! Yeah. I'm not sure that was uh, so angled again. Huh? No. I'm ready to ditch it after <laughs> one rally. Sense the time might be running out as far as the Japanese women's doubles pair is concerned. Because I don't see any signs that they really have found the answer today. No. that this could be a blueprint for a lot of other combinations. Oh. So important not to, for Gideon, not to um, constantly apply power oh. at the first opportunity. Oh, oh no, no, no. Oh. <laughs> That is ridiculously good. Has he been faulted? Yeah, he's been faulted. He's been faulted. But did you see that net shot, Steen? Yeah. How on earth did Sukumolio play that? Well, he's he's stopping, hand on hip. He's looking up at the giant screen. Yeah, he, he wants to see it. He wants to see that again. Here we go. But look at this net shot. Look at that. Yeah, good call, Lumpa. Yeah. Good call. Well spotted. Made the kill before the shuttle had come over the net. 13 14 break. The good news for Kamura and Sonora is that they're only two points adrift. Constantly uh, going for that um, inner sight line, the right side of the court there, makes it difficult for Camorans in order to get it across. Now, in the latter stages of the quarter final yesterday in the men's doubles, Camorra and Sonoda, it was Camorra who started doing this, yeah. really rushing the net. Yeah. And that's where they play the more or less counter-attacking style. Ah! That's good. There again. Took the half chance. Yeah. Oh, look at that defence. Yeah. 
signs to me that the Japanese pair have found some answers. Way back. Yep. And, um, I don't think they can single out Gideon. So um, they've got to treat them as equal and also start um, keeping uh, Sukumori a little bit to the backcourt. There's an upside to that, and that is that uh, Gideon is not so strong coming out from the net. But it's over 16 15. How many net cords have we seen today? support the net with them back in from Jakarta. <laughs> okay, thank you. Right. Hit a number of times in the service situation as well. They came 15. Right. 16, 15. Oh, that's loose. Whoa! I think he changed his mind, Kamora. Wow, he raises his uh, left arm a lot when he's serving uh, Marcus Gideon. Yeah, well, he's got called once earlier on in the opening game. Not called a fault for too high. Well, as soon as this rally is over, Kamora rushes to the back uh, to just hear what the coaches were saying to him. I was lucky the umpire didn't spot that. from Kego Sonoda. Got what it deserved. attacking look just immediately forward he stepped into that defensive yeah. shot and and uh, you can't even have time to blink and he's at the net two points away from taking this opening match of the semi-final tie Indonesian pair oh challenge here yeah. yeah you might as well they need it. Because otherwise it's game points. It might be game point anyway. Match point. Yeah, I think it was too. I think it was. We might as well ask Hawkeye to adjudicate. And what does Hawkeye tell us? That was clearly wrong. So it is indeed. One Match point opportunities for Indonesia. Match point 17. Play. <laughs> it's over 18. 20. First 
Nice point opportunity, come and gone. A rare error from Sukumolio. <laughs> it was called out, the Indonesians have challenged, <laughs> they believe it was in, and once again we need Hawkeye to tell us for sure. I like Gideon, he wouldn't miss the chance of celebrating. And he Hawkeye. can celebrate now, because it is the match yeah. to Marcus Fernaldi Gideon and Kevin Sanjaya Sukamolio. 21 14, 21 18 in a match lasting 42 minutes. And Indonesia one, are off Indonesia. to the perfect start 14, here in this semi final tie against Japan. Well, to me, they look like a different pair to the pair I had watched in Wuhan at the Asia Championships. Gideon and Sukumolio. They were sharp, they were hunting the shuttle, and they looked full of confidence. <laughs> There's Gideon celebrating while yeah. his partner is challenging. The teammates, the Indonesian team, all eyes glued to the giant screen before this was confirmed. Opening match to Gideon and Sukumolio. 21-14, 21-18.